right, well, greetings today. Got a bit of a unique specimen here on the table. So what we have here is actually an Intel Nook, of all things. Now, it's kind of fun. I've never actually owned one of these, but I've always wanted to own one. So this one in particular is the Nook 11. And I'll probably have some footage later about it off the Amazon page. But this was like 200 bucks. And what it is here is an Intel Nook 11. It is the NUC 11 ATK4 Atlas Canyon. Um, and so basically it is, it's, this one has Windows 11 pre-installed, everything fancy. Um, it is a Celeron 11th Gen N5105. Now these Celerons get a bad rap, but if all you're doing is browsing the internet, running Word, or LibreOffice in this case, you're fine. There's nothing to worry about. There's no need to worry about anything. Um, it does have the high-speed networking, so it is gigabit, but not two and a half, just regular gigabit. 256 gigs of storage and one terabyte, or 256 gigs of NVMe and eight gigs of RAM. Kind of like I said before. Um, as you can see on the front, you've got your lovely headphone and microphone jack. This plug, I believe, is for an infrared port if you bought like a special adapter. Two USB 3 ports, your power button, ventilation. Shocking. And then on the back, you've got HDMI, two 30 ports, two 20 ports, uh, Ethernet, which I do not know if it's gigabit or two and a half gig. I'd have to look that up. And DisplayPort, and then your power adapter and Kensington lock. So what these things are really good for is any sort of a point of sale situation, um, but also you could run into situations where you just need a low power PC. Uh, in this case, um, this boy is actually going to replace our Fire TV. So, long story short, I've had a Fire TV for a number of years now. And, to be honest, they're kind of awful. Um, what made them so much worse was, so to back up, the wife had one when we got married. Then, last year, it started having issues. An update pretty much just half-borked it. It would take like 10 minutes to figure out life, and that's just not okay. I just want to sit down on the TV, watch some tubies, and then go away. Maybe watch a movie or something and go away. I don't want to have to deal with shenanigans. That, that's not okay. So, boil it down. I went and bought a Fire TV 4K thinking, okay, 4K, amazing. You know, it should work better. Well, it doesn't. And in fact, it's a year down the road from that. And we've pretty much hit the head of that thing is starting to have issues now. And I'm just tired of dealing with it. So this is a little bit of an investment. I have a second one on the way that we will play with uh, at a future date. It's an older one of one of these. Uh, but this is a new one. So right now it's going to have Windows 11. We'll go ahead and boot into it. We'll talk about it. Um, I'm probably going to talk about some of the benchmarks and whatnot that we went through. So with that out of the way, um, let's get this thing hooked up, shall we? Now, I haven't tried this ahead of time. I've got an adapter going on here. In fact, I'm going to... In fact, I'm going to go ahead and do this. We're going to go ahead and we're going to hook into the display port here. I've already had this thing on and played with it, so... And then basically, this thing should fire right up. Let me go ahead and point this to the screen. I apologize, I am totally a professional. Um, in fact, high through the mat of the screen. As you can see, this thing comes default with a copy of Windows 11. Obviously, I'm not going to keep that on here, but if you need to use Windows, you know, it is a thing. And to be honest, it doesn't run that bad on here. It really doesn't. Um, and for some reason, I have no dongle. How does this stuff happen? It's not plugged in. 
you, you got to love, you know, you lay it on the table and then you don't actually plug it in. Look at that. And I still have no keyboard. There we go. So we're back, and this time we actually have another keyboard. Because, um, dumbass alert, when you grab a keyboard, you might want to make sure it works before, you know, you bring it out here. That's my own fault. Anyway, I've used the system a little bit. Um, I did play around with trying to get Windows Media Center working. Spoiler, it just doesn't. Um, there are ways around that. Eh. So, we'll go ahead and... I hate they did this in Windows. It's like, seriously, I'm going to go on a rant for a moment. Why does this only do taskbar settings? For years and years, that was this. And then you could just pull up Task Manager. Literally, why? Pull in here, yep, you can see where the N5105... Um, we're using 2.4 gigs of RAM, having done absolutely nothing. Thanks, Windows. Um, thank you for caching a bunch of shit in RAM we don't need. Uh, our 256 gig storage. And, you know, this thing... It's pretty snappy. Or, I've gone to the effort of installing the K-word on this thing. You'll see the name on the screen. Uh, obviously, for YouTube reasons, I can't say it. Uh, ask YouTube... For some reason, everyone I know pretty much gets waylaid. But you can see I've been playing with this a little bit. And I've got some of the movies that I have already pulled. I own all these. Um, so. And that's what it's really going to be used for. Is just straight up uh, watching stuff that I already have. That I can rip. And it will do this just fine. No issues at all. Do that. I can't play too much because you'll get copyrighted. But you know, I could play ye old Wrath of Khan here. And you can see as we're playing it here, the CPU, we're under moderate load. But keep in mind, there's only ever going to be one user to be able to, to do stuff on here. So this is perfectly fine. Anyway, that's enough Windows shenanigans on here. I think it's time we do something more uh, Penguin related. So this I'll go into in another video, but this is a SSD from the On brand from Walmart. On here is a lot of Linux distributions. Windows basically everything I could need to boot and install other than Mac OS because Apple likes to be Apple and you just can't do that for some reason so you can also do things like Chrome OS Flex so you know just as an example so Chrome OS Flex is kind of interesting it's Google Chrome OS but installed on any device that's compatible it's like an unshackled Chrome. Now, I say unshackled, there's no Android app support. So it's like the Chromebooks that I grew up with in college. Not necessarily uh, a full-on Chromebook. But in either case, it's still a neat operating system for old hardware. It is based upon Gentoo Linux, and Google custom compiles this thing with their own desktop environment. To use and you can see I've been using it everything works you know um, I've got Wi-Fi I've got Bluetooth you know the animations are nice and smooth I had this thing on playing YouTube earlier it, it does run great as a Chrome box essentially so we're gonna power this thing off and we're going to go straight to regular desktop Linux. As much as I like Chrome OS, it's not a perfect solution for a lot of people. And some people are going to need actual desktop applications. Um, 
in a lot of cases, that's just not possible on Chrome. You can install Linux apps on Chrome, and perhaps the other Nook that we have in, we can experiment with such things. But for the most part, I have the plans for that system, and I know what I'm going to do with it, so I probably won't. But I certainly could if I wanted to. So we're going to set this USB aside, and we're going to go ahead and we're going to pop in the Ventoy. Legendary on Ventoy. I wouldn't actually save anything important on here. It's Chinese garbage. But Chinese garbage is fun. I have more Chinese garbage coming in, so you may want to subscribe. So, once again, we're going to turn the baby on. Let her rip, tater chip. We're going to go back into F10. I do like the boot menu. It does work pretty well. So we're going to pick Ventoy, and then you can see I got all these Linuxes. Linux I? Linuxes on here. Eh, I've got Hollow ISO for like Steam Deck stuff. I got Haiku. If anybody wants to have fun with Haiku, it's like a continuation of BOS from the 90s. It's kind of fun. I've got Endeavor OS, which is like Arch, Elementary, Kubuntu, Ubuntu. I've got it all on here. Even some Nix OS Madness. Open SUSE. Now, I'm a Mint guy, and so that's what we're going to install here. 21.2 normal boot. Now, I'm not going to go into a full in depth installation uh, sensation. Um, kind of like what Crazy Ken used to do, if you like him. He's another great YouTuber. Hashtag not sponsored. So, this is going to boot up into what's called a live environment, and so from here, we could play around with things we really wanted to without making any changes to the hardware. It's kind of cool. In my case, I want to dest destructively install Linux. You should always want to destructively install Linux. So now that we're connected to the internet, you don't have to, I choose to. Go ahead and install Linux. I know it's so hard. You gotta you gotta click on an install Linux button. Actually, if you've made it this far into making a bootable USB, it really isn't as hard as some people make it out to be. The harder part is adjusting to the software in that on a Linux system because Linux is not Windows. That is an important lesson. So anyway. Sounds like something like so I started blasting. Um, so yeah, we're going to go English US, nothing too crazy. Uh, you do want to, inst for Mint anyway, you want to install the multimedia codecs. They don't come by default because of licensing issues. Mint will install them for you if you hit the checkbox. If you don't want these proprietary codecs, you can choose not to and install them later. They're included on the live CD, so we'll just say continue. And it says, has detected the following. This is because of Ventoy here. Um, and I'll go ahead and say, yeah. That we don't accidentally install to the Ventoy. Because uh, that would be disastrous. Even as funny as, you can install to a flash drive if you want to. Um, so we're going to say, we want to install Linux. But it says, install Linux along the Windows Boot Manager. Well, I don't want Windows. You can dual boot. I don't highly recommend it, but we will probably do some examples of dual boots and how that works um, because I do have dual boots in the house. I treat them on this SSD and this SSD separated. Um, mostly because I don't trust Windows not to overwrite the Linux boot manager and screw everything up. It's literally how it always happens. So we're going to say erase disk and install Linux Mint. There are more features in here, like if you wanted to do encryption, LVM. We're not going to get into that. That can cause a lot of problems. If you need disk encryption, by all means, I will do an install at some point that has disk encryption just to show you how it works and how pass keys work. So I'll go ahead and continue. And then if you have multiple disks installed that it could install to, you'll get this screen. If you don't get this screen, don't cry. It's just because you only have one disk, so there's only one choice. So obviously, I don't want to install a Ventoy. I want to install to my Lexar NVMe drive. 
we're going to say install now. And it's going to pop up and say, are you sure you want to destroy everything? Yes, we want to destroy everything. We want the nuke. I want the big fat nuke. I want all of the windows destroyed. We'll say continue. Yeah, New York, Indianapolis. I'm the East Time Zone, so whatever. We're going to say it's me. And I'm going to shorten this to... Intel dash milk 11 and we're not going to call this me this is going to be called home and we're going to have a definitely secure password we want to log in automatically because this is a media center I don't care about security I care about turning it on and having it log in and I don't have to do that for it so you could also encrypt your home folder. Uh, that would prevent fingerprint logins from working the way it works, but it would encrypt your home folder to not be accessible by outside of the system. You'd have to have a system password for that. And continue. And Windows is now gone. Completely destroyed, big fat nuke. So I'm gonna leave this run and I will catch up with you when we get back. You can even do a little log file here and see everything that's going on. Hey, installed. So we're gonna say restart now. I mean, you can do stuff in the live environment, it just doesn't actually do anything. So at this point, you'd remove the installation USB. Um, with Ventoy, I gotta wait, and out as it reboots, you'll press enter. And then I will pull the plug. We are released. And there's Nook our boy Nook. And then here we are all minty fresh. <clears throat> Boom! Installed. So that'll pretty much do it for this Nook. Um, I'll probably follow up when I do the other Nook and talk about the different media center things I'm doing with this one. Maybe I'll take this one out here and take a better look at it. Um, like the video, like the video. If you want to subscribe to see more shenanigans, it's perfectly fine with me, as it is. Um, and take care.